Hello, everybody. Welcome to Weekly Trash, the safe place to cleanse your mind, body, and soul of all that trash you consume this week so you can consume some more tomorrow. I'm your host, Josie Van Dyke, and I am sitting next to the one, the only, Danielle Davis, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Weekly Trash. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, Your outfit's amazing. I kind of asked you before where it was from. You're wearing your husband's coat. I am. I'm wearing my husband's coat. It's kind of my favorite thing to do. I and love it. I just love looking like a 90s mom. So some vintage hills and high-waisted jeans. Are those vintage? Yeah. Well, okay. These are not. These are just new from Zara. Okay. But I do try and do like a vintage hill. Where's your favorite place to get vintage stuff? Oh, I actually feel like Poshmark, if you really? search right, can be good. Okay. Um, or just, yeah, it's or even sometimes eBay. But you got to know kind of what you're looking for. Because every time I try to thrift... Yeah. Like in the actual store. Yeah. I never find anything good. And people yeah. like have these hauls and it's like the most amazing, amazing things. things. I think that's because they're going like so often. I guess that's true. They I probably go the every key. day. Yeah. But I will like specifically be looking for like cream vintage hills and then kind of weed out go things from and there. go, from, go there. from there. But Poshmark's actually a little bit of a gold mine. <sighs> good to know. Everyone knows now. Um, for those who don't know who you are, which they're living under a rock because you're the oh, you're gosh. like <laughs> the most popular model in Utah. No. I think every <laughs> nice. every company, every brand wants you because you're stunning. But have you always been a model? Because we need to do a dumpster deep dive on you. Oh, no, I have not always been a model. In fact, I didn't think I could model because I'm a little bit on the shorter end. Um, so no, I haven't always been a model. Interesting. Yeah, That's but I have been doing it for the past eight years. So. Okay, well, let's go deep down before even the eight years because I okay. want to know all about Danielle Davis. Let's do it. <laughs> Where are you from? Today's Dumpster Deep Dive is brought to you by Road to Baby. Did you know that one in eight people in the U.S. alone struggle with infertility and have difficulties growing their family? The team at Road to Baby understand the pain and frustration that can come with infertility, and they are there to help you navigate that often bumpy road to parenthood. Road to Baby is a surrogacy, egg, and sperm donation agency based out of San Diego, California, who connects those in need with surrogates, egg donors, and sperm donors to help them grow their family. Road to Baby believes in fairly compensating those who make these dreams of parenthood come true. First-time surrogates working with Road to Baby receive a minimum of $56,000 for their incredible dedication. Egg donors are generously compensated at $10,000 per donation, and sperm donors each earn $5,000 for their first donation. If you've ever considered becoming a surrogate, egg donor, or sperm donor yourself, I encourage you to reach out to Road to Baby. You have the power to change lives and make parenthood dreams come true. And wait, there's more. If egg, surrogacy, or sperm donation isn't for you, but you know someone who might be a perfect fit, you can earn $1,000 in referrals for egg and sperm donors and $6,000 or more per surrogate referral. If you or someone you know is struggling with infertility, remember that you are not alone. The experts at Road to Baby are there to help you navigate this often challenging path to parenthood. Their experience and guidance can make all the difference in your journey. Road to Baby exists to help growing families and creating a life-lasting connection and making dreams a reality. If you're ready to take that first step or just curious to learn more about the process, schedule a free consultation with Road to Baby. Visit www.roadtobaby.com. R-O-A-D-T-O-B-A-B-Y dot com. I'm from Layton. Layton. Yeah. So you're a Utah girl through I'm and through. I'm a Utah girly. Yep. Okay. Yep. And what's your family like? Do you have a big family, small family? Um, I have, a, I think, a fairly big family. Yeah. yeah. How many and siblings? Then, uh, four. Okay. Four. Yeah. You're like siblings. one, two, three, well, yeah. four. There's four of us. <laughs> there's there's four. Well, there's five. Well, there's five. There's four now. But yeah. um. And then we live, yeah, we just grew up in Layton. My dad was a pastor of a Christian church, which is a little bit unique for Utah. Very um, unique. Grew up going to church every Sunday and helping run my dad's church. And Being then in a Christian church? Yeah, a Christian what was it church. Called? It's not denominational. Okay. But it was just called Jesus People Ministries. Okay. Are they still part of it? Um, No, it's all done. Oh, it's all but done. But it was a great, like, an interesting way to grow up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my family. And are you guys still close? Do you still talk? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We still see our family quite a bit. My sibling, two of my siblings have moved out of state, so. Gotcha. I don't see them as much, but we do get together still. In high school, did you do any sports, activities? Were you a dancer? I just danced. Yeah. You a dancer? I danced with a private company my whole like childhood and upbringing and into high school. So. Did you want to be a ballerina? Um, no, actually. I just loved like jazz and pop and lyrical. Okay. Yeah. Were you going to do it in college? But I love dancing. Truly, to me, dancing is like sheer happiness. Really? Yeah, I love it. Do you ever go dancing with your husband now? No, he does not. He no, you guys should a do a couple like Well, a we did salsa. meet country dancing. Okay. So there's that. But yeah. he is like, I will not dance. Um, but I dance at home with my kids and then, you know. Yeah. occasionally there's an event where there's some okay. dancing yeah but you time. but do you like hip-hop like will you get down like can you drop it <laughs> drop it like it's no, hot it's like i mean that is or fun. are you more like lyrical like pull the shirt like <laughs> it's so beautiful. i honestly like both like okay. i love i love being both yeah okay did were you gonna do it in college did you have um, plans no, to do it after high school no i did nothing after i okay i didn't do nothing but i didn't pursue it you after pursue it college or after high school that was the end so yeah. what was your plan after high school I really this is gonna sound strange but I really just didn't have a plan like I just was living life and you weren't worried no oh, that's amazing <laughs> I just was boy crazy and okay. just okay. I knew I wanted to go to college so I did and that's where I met my husband almost immediately really and I just went on that journey I did go nanny in New York for two summers during that time as well, which was a really good experience. So, where did you go to college? Utah State. Utah State. Yeah. Okay. So Aggies. you're an Aggie. Were yes. you part of a sorority? Um, no. You weren't. No. No. no? So I loved it. It was a great time. I feel like Utah State is such a fun place to go to college because it it's like a small town. Yeah. And everybody is just like friends mm -hmm. and fun, and there's not really much to do except for like hang out. Literally. Yeah. And so yeah. There's it was the best college experience. I loved it. What's that Halloween party? The Howl? The Howl. Oh, iconic. <laughs> iconic. iconic. If you live in Utah, you know about the it Howl, is. the yeah. best party. So you went to New York, you nannied for a little bit. In New York, did you like, because you're obviously very fashionable. In New York, were, did that open your eye to fashion or were you already I've fashionable? I've always been this way. Like yeah. I, my mom literally has pictures of me from like when I was five. I have like this specific like photo in my mind. I'm holding like six Barbies and they're all dressed to the nines. And then I'm dressed to the nines, hair, breads, everything matching, coordinating. And I would never play with my Barbies. I would just get them dressed and ready for the day. And I've just always loved photos and really? fashion since I was younger. And then I just got like, I became obsessed over time. Oh and then in high school, my job was working like at Buckle. Oh, you were a Buckle I girl. I was a Buckle girl. I love Buckle. The <laughs> Everything I made went right Hardy. back into the, 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 the store. Clothes. Yeah, yeah, you need to yeah. just keep so buying stuff. I've always been this way. Yeah. So when you met your husband at Utah State, uh -huh. were you still a Christian? Yes. 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 Was your husband a member of the church of Jesus Christ yes. Latter-day Saints? Okay, yep. so... Did you guys get married in the temple? So he, we started dating and then like a month into dating, he was asking me a couple questions about like just my family and stuff. Yeah. And he, it was so funny. I'll, I'll never forget this. It was like the moment he realized I was not a member, which was fine for him, but yeah. he just didn't realize. Yeah. Um, I was not a member at the time. And so um, eventually we parted ways because I was going to New York to nanny and he was going off to do summer sales, you know, that typical, that typical um, Utah college boy. time Utah scenario. And I left to do nannying in New York and I took like the discussions at a branch out in New York and then decided like I, I was interested and I wanted to pursue it. So then when I came back to Utah, I kept like doing things and meeting and and in, in the end, I decided I wanted to do it, and I went ahead and got baptized, and he actually baptized me in the Logan Tabernacle, which was really cool. So he and baptized then, you, was, and you guys were dating at the time? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, and then a few months later, we got engaged, and then we waited the full year till we could get married in the temple, and then, yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> Oh, wow. So yeah. was that hard for your parents for you to switch religions? I think that my dad was just so happy that I was still believing in like God. Yeah. And then my mom was a little worry of like, are you doing this for your friends and your boyfriend or are you doing yeah. it? Because you, you know, 
but they've been nothing but so supportive and Good. amazing. So um, when we did get married in the temple that day, we also did like a ring ceremony. Yeah. So that my dad could do that. And that was really special. I did that too. Yeah. I feel like ring ceremonies, even if both of families are Mormon, yeah. like I feel like they're just so special. It is. Because you don't get to do I'm that. Glad in we the did temple, it. Yeah. You know? For sure. So after you guys got married, mm -hmm. where did you live? Were you guys still in college at the time? Yes. Yep. We okay. were just those poor college students, just truly making a dollar. And yeah. it was the best. What were you in school for? I did finance. So So you're smart. No. You're a smart girl. Honestly, finance? I am no like, math? I, I don't know math. I wish I would have done interior design because I do love interior yeah. design, but it's okay. At least I have the Another degree, life. you know. Another life. <laughs> What's your isn't your husband like a doctor? He's a PA for a neurosurgeon. Yeah. Okay. So they do brain and spine surgery. So yeah. his schooling was probably a lot. A lot. Yeah. He has a double masters basically. Oh, so yeah, yeah, that's a that's, lot. that's a lot of school. Yeah, a lot of money to go towards yes. school. So, how did you get into modeling? Was that like a job that you it's kind pursued? of a fluke thing? Um, my one of my really good friends is an incredible photographer, and she was just always so sweet and willing to take our photos. And she, I don't know, we always just had really good photos from her, and then I started sharing those, and then randomly like brands would reach out to me and I remember being like I remember the day that I switched my Instagram profile to model and being like oh my gosh what am I doing you know You're like, like oh, just oh, so okay. just yeah that's and, a big deal but I, we kept getting asked and so I felt like there's obviously something that works here so yeah. let's go ahead and so I changed the profile and then it honestly just spiraled. And I, I'm a little bit shook over like what's transpired over time. But really, here we are. Yeah. Because I know that you said that you didn't think you could be a model because you're on the shorter end. Yes. But your face, I mean, you're stunning. Have you always been confident in the fact that you're beautiful? Oh, gosh, you're so nice. No, but I truly. will say, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I do feel very, I'm a very confident person. But there's definitely moments still where I'm not as confident or I'm like insecure or, you know, have this doubt that definitely is still there. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like I have like such a solid foundation and that has been the key for me to self-confidence and just carrying that because our industry is really hard. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. So I don't know if you know much about it, but typically in the modeling world, you will get hired by a brand and you have no idea if that's the last time you're going to be with them or if they're going to hire you several more times. And then if you don't hear from them, you I tend to be like, oh no, is it my weight? Is it my hair? What can I change? What do I need to improve? What is not looking right? And that's really hard. You know what yeah. I mean? To just constantly self-criticizing. But I do feel like I have such a solid foundation because my husband is so supportive and I have such great kids. So it's like, I know what actually matters to me yeah, truly. And I look at modeling as a job. It's not like I'm a product yeah, it's for not a brand. Your whole worth. Right. It's not my whole worth at all. And I'm like, totally. I really think that's so important to recognize the difference there. I think that chasing after fame or money or like brands it would be a very difficult thing if you're not solid. Oh, absolutely. Other things, you know what I mean? Because it's when, tricky. When you started, because modeling, the money is kind of all over the place. Yep. Like you, it fluctuates. Sometimes you're mm -hmm. getting paid. Sometimes you're not. Like when you first started, what year would it have been? Like 2000? 2016. 16? Yeah. Do you feel like you were able to make money pretty quickly or was it a slow grind? I definitely was like so in awe that I was doing that. that yeah. I was just like, I'll, I'll do it for trade. I'll take, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I definitely did it for trade for a minute and more for like to build my portfolio. And I felt like so excited yeah. to be able to do that. Um, and it was fun. And so I started out that way and then it pretty quickly turned into a regular like rate paid situation. And it ended up being like the perfect mom job for me because I'm only gone. It looks like I'm probably working a lot more 
Um, cause I usually do like three to five shoots a week, but they're like two or three hours here yeah. and there. So to me, that's full time, but that's not actually, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's no. different. And I'm only gone for a few hours and then I'm right back home. So it's like, for me, exactly what I, what I want to so be that's doing. Perfect. Especially yeah. cause your kids are in school. So it's yeah. like the same school hours. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, you go to school. I'm going to go be a supermodel. I'll oh, talk gosh. to you later. <laughs> Like, I'll see you after school. Yeah, but I, yeah, it's important to me to be there for them. So it's, it's like the, it's a good balance. Ta- speaking on motherhood. Yeah. I, so I actually met you at, in St. George at uh-huh. that mixers retreat and we were talking. And, so fun. And I was asking you about like your kids and stuff. And I was shocked to find out you had a stillborn. I did. Yeah. Peyton. Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. Yeah. Cause I don't think people know that about you. Yeah, I don't. So my Instagram is definitely more professional for me. Yeah. Um, I'm considering one day, you know, growing up and doing TikTok and sharing more, yeah. more of the unpolished side of me, I guess. Yeah. But I, um, I don't share a lot on there, um, personal stuff. And but yeah, that is something that has been, it's like a nightmare yeah. that never goes away, but it's like, I'm always aware of it, like deep down. Yeah. Cause how old so, were you? It was your first baby. It was our very first baby. We'd only been married for like a year. Okay. So I was pretty young still. And, um, we got pregnant like unexpectedly. So that was a shock too. Okay. And I, it was my first pregnancy. I had no idea what I was doing. It was pretty young. And yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Uh, I was 31 weeks pregnant and I was, I was a bank or I was working at the bank at the time. Up to the 31 weeks was everything pretty standard and normal? Yep. Everything seemed to be normal. And then, um, I was working one day and I like could not get out of a crouched position. It was so strange. And so I thought maybe this is, maybe this is me, you know, like early labor labor, or something. Anyway, I could not get out of a crouched position and... I, my stomach like inflamed, literally inflamed and like was rock hard. And I would like, couldn't, I just like, couldn't, I was like almost out of mind. Like just, it was so much pain and you can't really describe how much pain it was. So I was at work. So I closed my teller window and I like, couldn't keep working. Anyway, it like got worse and worse. So then eventually they drive me over to the LDS hospital and I get there and I hurry and strip off clothes and they get me in the gown and then they gave me like a quick epidural because I was like beside myself at this point. Yeah. And they had called my husband. But he was like 30 minutes away. So he rushed there. By the time he got there, uh, they did an ultrasound and it was just black. Like the screen was black. And I was like 31 weeks along. So there should have been a baby in there. And I was like, what? Well, I've seen plenty of ultrasounds. So I knew what to expect. Anyway, so my husband thankfully was there with me when they told me and they were like your baby's gone there's no longer a heartbeat and your stomach's full of blood and we need to give you so much more care than we can give you here so we're going to have you transferred to the U and so they put me in an ambulance and we went to the U and it just got so bad it got so bad because all of my veins shrunk and I had what's called DIC where it's like my blood wouldn't clot so I was just it was just a lot. It was a lot all at once. So they were worried that I was going to lose too much blood and they were worried that they'd have to give me a hysterectomy. And on top of all that, I still had our baby inside me. And so it was a lot. It was a lot of things going on. Yeah. Um, and I remember there was a moment where they were like so concerned about getting a central line unit to me so that they could easily get me or very quickly get me medication heavy medication and they couldn't get any veins anywhere. And so they eventually had me go into this room and they wouldn't let anyone else in there. So I was by myself and they like, my face was plastered to the table so I wouldn't move. They were trying to find like a vein in my throat and in my leg. And it was like so intense. In the end, um, they found like they got a vein, a central line into my leg, but it was so traumatic. And your husband wasn't so allowed traumatic. to be in there no. with you. Yeah. And I can see why, because they basically just had to dig until they found And the you vein. could feel all of it. Yeah. It was really rough. Um, so then after that, 
after they had the central line in, then we were able to go proceed with having the baby. So I had him and... So you labored. You yeah, delivered I, vaginally. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. And then um, the saddest part for sure was I was so medicated and so just not there that I I only held him for like, I think two minutes and then I gave him back, which is like, now I'm like heartbroken. But um, they set him down on the table and came back to me because I like developed all sorts of things and things like escalated really quickly. But my husband was there and watched it all. And he was just like, he'll never, he'll never forget. And I think sometimes, especially in that scenario where there's so much attention on the mom and even afterwards, there was so much attention for me that like, we have to remember the husbands, you know, go through that too. Or partners. He lost his baby too. Yeah. And that was a lot to see all that going on. So, but thankfully they were able to place a balloon and full of saline and keep my nurse in and, I'm able to have, I went on to have three more children, so. Well, that's amazing, and your babies are all beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, Peyton, which was his name, Mm -hmm. um, when you were delivering, what was going through your head that whole time, like knowing that you were going to push out your son, but you weren't taking him home? Oh, it was... It was um, devastating. Like, like how did you get through that? And then my milk came in and I could hear other babies crying. And it was just, it was so much that I, I really had to just, I don't know. I had to rely on my, I mean, my husband and then just like the power of prayer and just the love and outpour of support was incredible. But it's something I would never wish on anyone it's it's pretty rough still so and did you do a funeral service or what what was your plan I wish we could have and I I do have some regrets for sure like I said I only held him for a few minutes and um we did not we did not bury him at the time it was too expensive and we were in college (laughs) college students so we we didn't have the money at the time and um So no, I don't have a grave Um, and it's just, it's so sad, but I am so grateful. There's like a service that came through. They're literally like angels and they did an imprint of his hand and then um, took a photo of him, just one. So we have one photo. So, but that was also during a time where I don't even think our phones took photos. Yeah, because this would have been what, 2000 and... um, I think yeah. yeah social media was fairly new GoFundMe wasn't right around None of that because yeah. if, if this happened now I mean yeah. people would have rallied behind you GoFundMe paid yeah. for a funeral you would have had everything and also I don't think stillborn was even really talked about no it like, was did surprising. you know that that was a thing no I didn't even know I mean I was so naive I guess but I did not realize like the depth of all the things that could go wrong and like how lucky it's like when you see a child that a baby that made it like there are many things that could go wrong to get and it's like a miracle that they make it here okay yeah um so after that we like i came home i had already had one baby shower so i had all these cute little boy outfits and I remember my mom bought like a white bin for me to put them all in just like so sweet there's these like tender moments And um, I'll never forget it. There were so many things that were so hard, were so hard during that time. But we decided, the doctors told us to wait a year, give my body time to kind of readjust and heal, and then we could try again. So we tried again a year later, almost exactly. And then we had our Kate, who was perfect and... So do do they know what happened the first time with Peyton? They just said that maybe there was an indication that maybe I had preeclampsia um, and that he potentially could have been handicapped. They're not 100% sure on that, but he had some of the signs. So we don't really know. So then going into a second pregnancy, did that scare you though? Not knowing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I really truly didn't believe she was going to make it until she was actually in my arms alive and well. That was really hard. It was hard to not like be detached almost yes. because I was so worried that she was going to not make it. 
because I think women are already stressed in general when they're pregnant, you know, every little cramp or movement, like, is Mm -hmm. that normal? Like Googling. Yeah. And so for you to have what had happened to you guys and then Mm -hmm. be pregnant again, I would, I can only imagine the anxiety that entire pregnancy. So much. When you finally gave birth though, was it a healing moment to be able to have, you know, a baby cry and hold and take care of? It was so sweet. I literally, <laughs> you you know, you're a mother as well, but that moment when they lay your baby on your chest and like to have her be warm was, was really special for sure. I can imagine. So. Do you feel like that, that moment, did you feel like a part of you healed a little bit? Yeah, I definitely did. Um, but there will always be this like hole. And I think that's because I don't, I I literally feel like I have a child and somewhere and I can't, like I want him with me. Yeah. Um, but I do, I believe in eternal family. So I do think that one day, (laughs) um, I do think that one day I will see him again. So that gives me great peace. So I do too. Yeah. So you obviously have. Two more boys. I do. You have three kids in total. I do. Every pregnancy, did every pregnancy go well? Were there any complications? Pregnancies. Just totally normal. Totally normal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and you had told me when we met how with your daughter, with breastfeeding, that was Mm -hmm. such a hard thing for you. And oh, yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit because I feel like that's a stigma that gets kind of pushed under the rug like, oh, breastfeed, you're supposed to breastfeed the end. Yeah. I had no idea (laughs) that it was actually something that you might have to work for. I honestly just thought you just, you just nurse your baby and it just works. Yeah. Uh, I very quickly realized that that was not the case for me. I know that can be for some people, but I had to really work for my milk supply. So, um, that was really difficult. And I remember there was a point when we took her in for her two week appointment and she had gone down to five pounds and they, which, you know, they normally, yeah, they go up, they do up and or go down a little bit when you take them back to their two week appointment. What was but her birth weight? She was like, she was six. So she basically had lost a pound and a half and essentially like she was dying because she was not getting enough food at all. And I did not know that like she wasn't getting enough. Yeah. I just was uneducated and unaware and completely my fault, but she was not getting enough from me. So then I like, (laughs) I like flipped a switch and that became my number one priority in life was just learning how to increase my supply. I was started pumping like crazy and all these extra things and then supplementing with formula at the same time. Um, and that was such like a freak moment for me because I'm like, here I am. I finally have this little baby that we've been dying to have. And then, you know, this happened. So I, in the end, she ended up being such a big baby because I think anytime she cried or did anything, I was like, she must be hungry. She was hungry. We got to feed her. She's got to eat. So we fed her and fed her and um there was a point where people like weren't like oh your baby's so pretty it was like oh your baby's huge and i'm like i love it <laughs> You're like tell give me, me tell the me chubby more. baby i love it i love so chubby yeah babies. she ended up being just fine in the end but and were you able to breastfeed your other two as well yes so i made it to like 11 months with her and then nine with the second one and then i think seven with the third wow. so we did it you did it we did it but it was a struggle for sure and i always had to supplement too yeah but and how old is your youngest now? He's almost eight. Eight years old. Yeah, wild. That's so wild. I know. Does it does it go by so quick for you? Because so it goes by so. I think it goes quick. So, oh, I can't speak. I think it goes by quick for so many moms. We like blink. Yeah. Like my oldest is five, and I'm like, wait, I just gave birth to you, so I can't imagine yeah. my youngest being eight. It's so strange for me because now I'm on the other end where I'm definitely like my kids are a little bit older. Yeah. And I look back at that time, and if I could say, like, advice to any young mother, I'd be like, hold on to those times. I miss my kids being little and their little voices and, like, the activities we do and the play dates. It's so cute and fun, 
and it goes so quickly and I like I grieve that time so much oh, yeah. that is gone but when I was going through it it felt like I was just surviving and oh yeah it was hard because I had 304 so I was just like going like crazy and then my husband was busy working and traveling too so I don't know that I fully like enjoyed the whole process as much as I would have liked to yeah. just because we had them all so close together and so fast. Was that planned? But no, not no. at all. Both my boys is, boys were surprises. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I just, I miss that. I miss the little ones. They're so cute. It's such a sweet yeah, time. It it's is. hard though. It How did you time. know you were done? I don't know that I am done. Really? I don't know. I, I think, I think we probably are done, but I just, it's just such a fun, yeah. bringing a little new life into the world. There's nothing like it. Okay, wait, Danielle, have another one. I know. Do it. I feel like it has to be within the next year and not at all. So we'll oh, see what happens. Because you make the most beautiful children. Very nice. And they, they are all models. Like when you do your family modeling campaigns, like, yeah. do you have to do that often? Like we do. Because I feel like that's. So yeah, fun. I okay. Often to me is just a few times a month, but no, that's we've done some often. really fun jobs um, together, and it's kind of cool to give my kids that experience, and they yeah. understand we treat it like a job for them. So yeah. they get paid, they get a treat and a toy. It's a full thing. No, that's incredible. Some people call that bribery, and I'm like, hey, they're working. They need to get you know, yeah. What they they work hard, so. But we do, yeah, we have some really cool jobs lined up this year, and we've done a lot of fun ones in the past. It's it's cool. It's fun to do it together. It is challenging, obviously. Taking photos with kids. Is, That's the thing. Like, do you have any tips, challenge. any tricks? Yes, okay. always. <laughs> okay, what, give us some. I, I would lie. I'm, like, so happy to share this. <laughs> yes. Because I feel like um, it's it's one of those things where it's all about the parents. Yeah. How you handle yourself. And what you expect of your children will dictate the entire photo shoot. Okay. So I, we always plan on at least one. There's always one kid who eventually or just day of is like, yeah, no. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. That's always going to happen. There's going to be at least one. And then on top of that, there's usually a moment where we're like, okay, this is a little stressful because we're booking, you know, really big jobs, big brands, yeah. it's a lot of money. And so they're expecting us to deliver and so it's a lot of pressure right no that would be scary. or even we can relate it to family photos right oh, yeah. you booked a photographer you're paying for this you but want it good definitely photos. is different when a right? brand is like this is going to be on a billboard <laughs> yes. in new york city please smile <laughs> yeah so we i feel like the tip is number one parents need to just chill okay just lower your expectation of your kid okay. number two expect at least one of them to have a hard time but when they are having a hard time, a lot of times we'll turn one kid, that kid that's struggling towards us and hug them and love on them. But my husband and I are smiling big and we're happy and engaged and it, it totally works. Okay. So anytime your child's upset, just hold them, love on them, give them what they need. And yeah. then also just make sure that you're like almost overcompensating yeah. for that. But then also like let them have a minute. Let yeah. them go play for a second. Let them go explore or go take photos and and ask them questions and kind of distract them and help them to forget that there's someone taking photos. Yeah. And then it will it will naturally kind of come back around. Okay. And then you've got to feed the kids. The kids have got to eat before. Oh, yeah. That is so crucial. They have to have a solid meal before and then something for to look forward to after. So we always go get a treat. And usually that's when we'll go buy their toy as well. And then we also let them know ahead of time how much money they're making, who's the photographer, the location, kind of how long it will yeah. be. And we make sure throughout the shoot that they get breaks. That's so, fair. I thought was a lot of tips. No, those, those are great but tips. it really is key to... Have just... you ever had like a horrible experience with or without the kids? Um, shooting we've thing. had some really challenging things like we were shooting for Newport Beach in California and they had flown our family out we we're staying there for a few days and the beach was freezing cold absolutely freezing it's and we're all in there. swimsuits you know and so we're like trying to make them you know run around and have fun. fun and they're doing their best yeah 
And we just, it was really hard. It was very cold. Yeah. And so in those scenarios, it looked warm, right? For sure. In those scenarios, it's hard because, you know, you have to just pretend. Make it through and pretend. Pretend. Yeah. Um, you obviously are beautiful, colored woman. So nice. Yes. Have you ever dealt with racism in the workplace and modeling? So, Especially here in Utah, I feel yeah. like it's not very diverse. I do feel like there's definitely an interesting feel towards, I would say, majority of black women in Utah. I feel like most of them don't love kind of the culture here or the way things are done here. But for whatever reason, I don't know if I look at things differently or I haven't had the exact experience that they've had. And I don't discredit anything that anyone's right. been through. Um, but for me personally and my family, it has been so good. Really? I feel like it's been the opposite. I feel like because there's not as much diversity here, yeah. our family books so much. Oh, so I believe it. my daughter who has a huge afro and curly hair. She's beautiful. People are so kind to her everywhere we go, literally everywhere we go. And they ask about her hair and they say how beautiful she is and our family is treated so well. It's kind of crazy. And I feel like my kids have had such a good experience that thankfully we haven't had anything that's, you know, stood out to me. I also try really hard not to look for it. I'm sure yeah. if I was to look for it or bring attention to that, I'm sure I could think of moments. But for me personally, I just, it doesn't serve me. And I would rather be a good example and break the stereotype and right almost like rise above it yeah and be untouchable then to like give that time if that makes sense no that does and i love i love that so, you said untouchable like just showing like it yeah. can affect you yeah and I, if it is happening feel the same doesn't way. matter yeah so and we've talked about racism with our kids and we've like made sure that they're aware as well and i thankfully they haven't had Anything. That makes me really so, happy. Yeah. Because I feel like Utah kind of gets a bad rep. It does. It does. And, and it's sad. Understand me. So I will say, I think for my brother, who's a tall, very muscly black man, he's the nicest person you'll ever meet, but he does look like he could like eat you, you know? <laughs> eat you. He's going to eat <laughs> he's you. He's big. Yeah. But I think for him, it's totally different. And I, I actually have witnessed things happen to him. So totally different scenario and obviously completely unacceptable, but- yeah. So it's all based on experience, but I'm thankful for mine. And especially in modeling, you feel like it's, and if anything has helped. Oh, it's helped the a career. Ton. Yeah. I'm like shocked at how much I've been able to do and how much I still am booking years and years later. And I am grateful because I don't feel like I have to ask for it. It comes to me and that's yeah. ultimately the goal, right? To draw that attention. So absolutely. Yeah. So I'm super grateful. What's been your favorite shoot? Oh, that's impossible to answer. Because do you like more like casual where it's like minimal makeup? Like, because I'm assuming majority they do your hair and makeup or are you like, no, let me do it. No, I think so. I would say makeup's provided, I don't know, 75% of the time. Yeah. Hair is not so much, um, but it is nice to get your makeup done. It's kind of nice because yeah. I am not a professional makeup artist by any means. You don't and even so, need makeup. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're like, so what nice. What do you wear? Like, just blush and then you're <laughs> ready to go? I used to wear way too much makeup, that's for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, I've since learned my lesson. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but makeup artists are so nice, and there's some great ones in Utah, which is nice. Yeah. And then um, hair is not usually provided, but it's it's fun. It's a fun job. Sometimes I have to remember that this is, like, my normal. Yeah. But it's also really exciting. It was fun, too, because a couple of times we've had my mom on set. She's booked with me. Oh, and so, so she's fun. gotten her makeup done and it's fun to watch her enjoy yeah. that because um, it's not her norm. Yeah. You know? Do you like the shoots where they're a little more extravagant and the outfits are maybe more intense yes. and there's more makeup or are you more like, I like the more low key ones. I think the best part about our job is that there's such a variety because yeah. I'm, I'm like I said earlier, a model is like a product or a canvas yeah. where it's supposed to be blank and then they can kind of choose yeah. what suits their needs for the brand. And I I love that like one day I'll go shoot workout clothes and the next day I'm shooting beauty and then the next day I'm wearing like boutique clothes and then the next day I'm shooting with my family at a hotel. Yeah. It's such a variety and I get to meet such incredible people and work with such great brands. So I kind of like it all, 
Gotcha. But I will say my favorite, like my bread and butter probably would be um, beauty and then editorial. Like that's like my favorite. Yeah. And then I love doing commercial work like for hotels and stuff with my family. Well, and when you do that, I'm sure you get perks too. Like yes. come stay that's at the nice. hotel, turn it into a family vacay. <laughs> There's definitely some nice perks to what we do for sure. No, I love A lot love of that. PR stays and gifts I love it. and stuff. It's very nice. I love it. And how long have you guys been married? 15 years. 15 years. Isn't that crazy? What's the, what tips and tricks do you have? Oh gosh. I think being kind to each other is everything. Like just mutual love and respect goes so far. And then we are huge on supporting each other, but like pushing the other person to be more better, better than, you know, like just, we always refer to like the quotes that are about, you know, you need to be uncomfortable. Yeah. And so we want to keep growing and I feel like we're just getting started. That sounds probably so crazy. Oh, no, I love that. But Alex and I have some pretty big goals and some things we want to do. So how old are you? No, we can't do that. I'm an older model. <laughs> she's a, that's she's for sure. an older model. Because <laughs> models, they don't like to share their age. I okay. mean, you know, we like to. But like you are, you look like you're 30. Well, thanks. I'm a little, I'm a little older than 30. I would say you're like 29, 30. Oh, thanks. Let's go so, to 29. Let's go to the 29. <laughs> let's go to the 29. But to like be married for 15 years and be like, yeah. oh, we're just getting started. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, we've got some fun things ahead. I'm excited. What what goals? What plans? Anything <sighs> you can share? I mean, nothing. No, nothing I can share. Would you ever yet. work together? Like, like start a business together? That's kind of the goal. Okay. Yeah. To okay. do something like that. And as we continue to do shoots together and work for certain brands, it just seems to keep elevating and getting more. So he didn't want to be a model. Like he never no. was like, I'm going to be a I'm model. I'm actually glad you brought that up because so many people think that my husband probably, I don't know actually what people think, but I, I should clarify. He does not consider himself a model. Yeah, he's like, I'm a PA. He's literally like, I'm a PA. I brains, all that stuff is I his went to jam. college for a long yes, time. Right. I'm not a model. But he also sees the other side of it, right? Yeah. Like the money and all the things we get in the perks. So he is willing, more than yeah. willing to do it with me, which I'm grateful for. And he's actually so good at no, it. No, you guys look He's like legit good at it. And I'm like, model. look at you. I'll show him I'm like, this is proof. And he's like, I don't know. But- He's so good at it. And did thankfully. it come naturally? Or did you have he to give totally, him tips and no, tricks? No, I haven't had to tell him anything. He really? really just like, he's really good at this like specific facial. Yep, that's it. Like the, sm- <laughs> like the smirk. The smirk the like the, like he's pissed like almost. Like GQ. Yeah. Yeah. He's got yeah. that look and he's just a good, he's an attractive man. So it works. You guys are very attractive. We, oh, thank you. Are you guys going to start like an OnlyFans? <laughs> Oh gosh, no. You never. No, I, no, not my, our, our whole thing we always talk about, we don't want to sell our soul to love. Get that. No. It's not Set. worth it. It's not worth it. Money's no. not happiness. No. Money is makes things more convenient for yeah. sure, but I definitely feel like we're in that phase of like, okay, what is worth our time? So yeah. I'm more selective, what I say yes to for sure. And then we are just like honing in on creating memories with our family. So we're doing a lot of traveling and we're actually leaving to New York in two days, but I just, it's oh, just fun. good. For like, work or so travel? So I'm on a billboard in Times Square. With who? <laughs> just so sweet with Minky Couture. Shout out. And they are so nice. They messaged us and they're sending us on a trip to New York to go see the billboard, which is so sweet. That's going to be so, amazing. Yeah, we're excited. It'll be fun. Um, Where is the billboard? I'm assuming it's like middle of Times Square. It's literally McDonald's, like right by McDonald's in Times Square. Oh my gosh. Which is fun. Yeah. That's going to be incredible. Are you bringing like a videographer or anyone to come and like take pictures of you guys? I should, no. You should. I do have a little nice camera. Anyone (laughs) Anyone want to fly themselves out to (laughs) take photos? Because that would be like a cute video of you guys seeing the billboard together. Is it just you or your kids in the photos at all? We're just taking, oh, in the 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 billboard, it's just me. Just you? Yeah. But my husband and I are going on the trip, so. Oh, that's going to be so fun. Yeah. Do you have any fun plans while you're there? Um, I really wanted to go to like the Ralph Lauren polo. Oh, yeah? But we cannot get in. It's already booked. So- we're just going to do like, we've never been, in, we've been in New York several times, but never like this where it's like truly our own trip to do what we want. Yeah. So we've planned just like some fun things that we want to do. Going to go see a Broadway show. I was going to say, are you going to do a Broadway, Broadway show? Anything to get dressed up. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So it should be a good time. I think I'm jealous. I love New York. It's, it's just, fun. 
you just feel alive. It does. It definitely has an energy. Yeah. That's unique to it for sure. And the fact that you are on a billboard is just crazy. If you could tell yourself, your older, your younger self, that you were going to be on a billboard one day, would you have believed it? No. No? No. In fact, I was just in New York a few months ago shooting with another brand. And then me and my friend Hannah, the model, we were standing there together and we're like, one day we want to be in a billboard here. And then a few months later, I was. And it was just so cool. It was like a full full circle. Circle moment. Do you believe in manifestation? I do. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I do too. I, I think, think it's, it's powerful. huge. Yeah. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. And you have to put it out there. Yeah. Put it in I the really universe. Think that. Yeah. Like a mixture of praying uh-huh. and putting it out there. That's, I feel like the, the thing for me is the mixture. Yeah. I think it's both. Have you always had a pretty strong testimony in Christ? Yeah. Even because yeah. I feel like switching religions, what was like the biggest difference between the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the Christian church you were in before? So for me, I felt like growing up in a Christian church was, you know, one thing. But then I felt like once I converted, it was like I had the fullness. So very, they it like they meshed really well yeah. because my dad's church was just solely teachings of the Bible. So then I just added the addition of the Book of Mormon, essentially. Yeah. Um, And it felt like, oh, this makes sense. Like, this is what's been missing. So I have such a different perspective than I think most traditional people in Utah of religion because of my dad's church and being a member now of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I feel like... I see so many parts of that that make sense. Yeah. As why that that um suggestion I guess is there. Yeah. So my dad's church was fully funded by him. And So it was like your dad's church. Literally. So like do you watch Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? I don't. Okay. Well, Mary Crosby has like a church. Okay. But you I guess you don't watch so you wouldn't know. Yeah. But like she owns the church. So your dad owned this church. Literally. Owned the church, paid for it all himself. But he would pass around a basket on Sunday, like during the congregation, the meeting, and people would put in whatever they felt like. So a dollar or two here and there, but it was never enough Yeah, when you do it that way. So like, I feel like I have a testimony of tithing because you have to have tithing to run a church. And I saw that firsthand. Yeah. And then my parents ran the whole thing. They were the ones cleaning the church, putting together the programs, literally doing everything because there wasn't callings, right? So you didn't have like a calling specific to yeah, wasn't different that areas. community base, right? So it was just like whoever wants to help can help, and it was hard. It was really hard on my family, um, and so many other things. Like I didn't grow up having young women's. I didn't have leaders caring and looking after me. I just kind of was just doing my thing, and so I really truly have testimony purely based on my personal experience of these very specific things as to why it needs to be that way or as to why it needs to be suggested that way. Obviously, I fully believe in doing what you think is best for you, and I support and love everyone no matter what. Yeah. But for me personally, it was what I needed, and I love love it for my family. We're kind of like going all over the place. We're like, we're talking about church, then we came back talking about modeling, then we went to motherhood. Yeah. But I'm just so curious with your upbringing, having your dad run a church did he do anything else like is that yes like, so he also did like construction work as okay because well. yeah. i'm like how did you guys live like yeah. how were it you was guys- a lot it was a lot on our family and yeah. he was my dad was very passionate about charity work and so not only did he run that church but he also would go minister to the men and women in prisons and then he would also run like I'm sure you've heard of Angel Tree yeah yeah he would help with that and like I just remember so many Christmases I would complain me and my brother would complain because we would spend it getting donations and like getting presents for other kids and we were like why are we doing this and now I see yeah the full scope of it but that was like all I knew that was normal to me and my parents were always having people stay with us and feeding people and just constantly serving and that was a huge part of my life and um, something I'm like really grateful for, for sure. It's definitely shaped a lot of who I am now. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Are there parts of that that you want to put into your own family? Like, yeah. do you guys do any of the charity things that you did growing up? 
I mean, we do our own on our own little scale, yeah. but it's nothing compared to like what my parents used to do. I mean, and I now I look back and I'm like, how did they do everything? Yeah, everything. it's like they devoted their entire lives. They truly to did. It. And my dad passed away a few years ago. Okay, because so, I was going to ask, yeah, if, if they're no longer doing the church, what are they doing now? Yeah, so he passed away, and I feel like ever since then, it just has made me. Obviously, when people pass away, you definitely have this time of like grieving, and then. And then I just, I like, same with my son. I just want to honor yeah. him and both of them and give them, you know, I love talking about them because I feel like it just, it, it honors them and they are such an important part in my yeah. life and who I am. And obviously my dad wasn't perfect and he had his faults. I don't want him to sound like a perfect saint by any means, yeah. but he did so much good, so much good. And I love that. I well, and I love that because you believe in internal families, like you know that like your dad and mm -hmm. your son are together right yeah. now, and like you have two amazing angels. Is your mom still alive? Yeah, she is. And when your dad left and passed away, did she want to keep doing the church? Was that the reason why the church ended? No, it stopped before that. Okay, my dad got really sick too, but no, it stopped before that, and she she definitely doesn't. Yeah, there's no church there anymore so she just goes to another christian church gotcha but, yeah. did any of your siblings convert to the mormon church with nope, you i'm the only one you're the only I'm one, the only one. <laughs> you're special you're i don't know <laughs> you're, you're, they're like oh she's the black sheep of the family <laughs> what is she doing <laughs> definitely always that way i am the one it's funny my sisters still make fun of me because they are more like natural and you know they don't necessarily get ready and wear makeup all the time yeah. and they have beautiful hair because they don't touch it very much. And anyway, and then there's me who like walks in looking like she's going to the prom every day and they just love. make fun of me all the time. And I, I love it. It's great. Your daughter's hair, did she get it from you? Like, did you have that hair growing up? Yeah, she, I think it's my husband's hair is actually curly too. If really? It's long. Okay. So I think it's both of us. My hair is also naturally like super tight yeah. curls. I've chemically relaxed it. So it's lost that too. Do you too. do the Brazilian blowouts? No, I never have, but I should. I'm doing one. Because oh. I have really curly hair. I've heard they're amazing. But my hair is obviously different texture, but yeah. it's frizzy and curly it's and uncontrollable. Hair. So I sew extensions. In my Do you have extensions? Yes. I have all the things. Okay. All we the do things. All the things. We love it. We love it. <laughs> we, hey. I well, actually partner with Lace Hair paint. and okay, they're yeah. wonderful. No, they're amazing to work with. They look with. gorgeous. Thank you. They look gorgeous. You're so sweet. So um, what advice would you give to a girl that wants to get started in the modeling world? Oh, this is such a good question because I actually get DMs every day, like yeah. honestly about this. And I always say like, you need to basically show or you need to tell people what they don't know. Yeah. So like maybe I know I like doing bridal, but does the world know I like doing bridal? Do I show that? Am I sharing pictures of that? So I would say set up a shoot with a photographer you have access to or you can pay or you can work with and do a shoot and show a variety of things that you like to model. And then once you have those images, you can, you know, reach out to the brands you want to work for, let them know, you know, what you're willing to do and start that way. But also set your phone up and take videos of yourself. Look and see what angles work for you. Yeah. Practice your moving, practice your posing, practice your facial expressions and give a variety. Kind of just make sure that you're doing your research ahead of time. So you're practicing that way, but you're looking at other models, seeing how they move, how they shoot. And then that way, when you go into a shoot, you're more confident because there's definitely moments where like I'm shooting in a room full of, I don't know, 15 people and it's silent and they're all just watching me. That's pretty intimidating yeah. if you don't know what you're doing. Or if you haven't practiced, and I'm not saying by any means that I'm an expert, but you kind of are. No, I, you just, you, you kind of learn over time. You get pictures back, you see what worked, what didn't work. And but I would say just put it out there. You got to put it out there, reach out, do the work. You got to hustle for a minute for sure. But also share your best work. Not everything. Not everything needs to be shared. Gotcha. Just your best work. Do you look back at photos when you first started and go, that was a horrible pose. Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Even You've now. Evolved. Yeah. Me and my other model friends, we'll talk about it. And like, sometimes there's just shoots where you're like, that wasn't it. And it's okay. Or that pose I thought looked great. Translated through the camera, wasn't it? 
but it's okay. You learn yeah. from it. You kind of just take it as like, okay, now I know not to do that. Or now I know what this would look better. Yeah. You kind of learn what looks good on your face, on your body. And you just, it's like a dance. I always say posing is like dancing. It's a continuous thing. And it, I don't, I love it. But it's also a talent. Yeah. Like I, I don't think everyone, I mean, maybe everyone can learn, but I do think it is a talent because we were doing photos for my 1 million downloads, like with the cake. Congrats, by the way. And I was like, grab a mirror. I literally had ha- had to have her that put a helpful. mirror behind mm-hmm. her yeah. so I could see myself. I was like, how Which do models are so do good, it? By the way, I saw oh, those. Thanks. But I'm like, how do models do this if they aren't <laughs> looking in a mirror? That's actually a great way to do it too. I mean, you can't always grab a mirror, yeah, right? No. And like that, the tradition, like for the most part, yeah, no, that's, you can't do that. Next, America's but, next top model does not do that. <laughs> no, but that's a really good way to learn and to um, make sure you're getting good images. Yeah. Also, a lot of times photographers will shoot tethered, which means they have like an orange cord that plugs into the laptop and you can see the images as you go. That's nice. It's also a nice way to kind of see like what you're doing, if it's working or not. Because... but. You were even saying when we were taking our picture, you're like, selfies are actually harder. Selfies and are I was like, hard. Yes. What? Let's just call that out. I'm like, mm. selfies are hard. And yeah. that is where we agree to disagree. <laughs> I'm like, a selfie, I can make myself look like a 10, okay? <laughs> you take a picture of me from far away, good luck. It might be a five, it might be a 10. It could be anywhere in that. It could be a zero. It you know, depends maybe on you the need ratio. to teach me then a little bit more about Yeah, we selfies. can, we can, f- we can switch. help each other out. We can yeah. switch our, yeah. give each other our, our ideas. I love it. Our things. Love. Well, thanks for letting me do a dumpster deep dive on you. Thanks for asking. But we need to take out trash now. We need to talk about the week. What's gone on? Any trash you need to take out? Any things you've been thinking about? Pop culture and TikTok trash is brought to you by Spearmint Love. You guys all know how much I love Spearmint Love. Their selection is insane. They have over 100 brands that you can shop from, and they have every single baby essential and kiddo essential you could possibly want. And they just opened their 4th of July shop, and it is so good. There's red, white, and blue outfits, which you know I'm going to be getting for my kiddo so they can look so cute on the 4th of July. They have a new popsicle print, checkerboard, gingham, retro sunsuits, shorties, really everything. But the thing I love the most is their swimsuit selection. It is to die for. And so if you're like me and you're trying to manifest warmer weather because there is snow at my house, pray for me. I'm ordering all the summer outfits because I need to have something to be happy about. And I'm really, really, really hoping that me ordering this is going to manifest some warmth. So if you're like me and you need to do the same, or you already are lucky enough to live somewhere where you are in the warmth, you have to go to spearmintlove.com and use code weekly trash for an exclusive 25% off your order. And that is for podcast listeners only. So again, spearmintlove.com use code weekly trash. Gosh, I just feel so busy right now. And honestly, do you know what's haunting my life? What? My closet. Oh, yeah. are you a clothing collector? I bet, I bet your closet's incredible. How do I describe what I am? I really get so much joy out of clothes. Not to like, I'm not dressing for other people. Yeah. I have like a different style and I definitely do things a little not traditional, I guess, in clothing. But I love, by the but way. I, thank you. But I like, it's just genuinely fun to me to dress and I have so much clothes at this point that we created a second closet for me amazing however just that transition has been like a nightmare it's been really hard okay you should I bet you could collab with somebody first of all we need to acknowledge this is first world problems this is nothing oh yeah this is not a big deal no trash but in my world literally anything okay Trash is good. Trash I'm like, is bad. That's currently what's on my mind. No, it's just you have so much clothes. So much clothes. I've gone through them. I've hired someone who's going to help me list my clothes, and I just really love like a beautiful closet. Yeah, so that's what we've done. We've created two beautiful closets for me. Wait, I want pictures. I want to walk through them. I'll have to show you. I good. have an obsession with closets right now. Like just. Oh. I podcast with uh, Justin Lala, Lex mm-hmm. Nevin. She's so and great. Her closet goals like just all yeah, the clothes and I everything can only imagine and I was just like I want a dream closet I don't live in a house where I could have a dream closet right now like yeah. my closet's not big enough I'd have to kick my husband out and we yeah. just aren't in that point right now but we were looking at a house so this is my trash we were looking at a house to possibly redo Ooh. like 
fix it up. I love this. And ended up not falling. It didn't. It, it could still happen. Probably not. But I had all these plans, and I was on Pinterest, just looking at all these closets, and I was yeah. like, Oh my gosh, I want to have a dream closet. I know. Like that is all I want. Listen, when I say I have a second closet, it is by no means this closet you're speaking of. Oh, okay. That is my goal also, yeah. but it can't happen in my house right yeah. now. There's, yeah. we have literally, we are, we have done every space in our house. We finished our basement. Yes. All the, like, no, your literally house seems done. gorgeous. Thank you. But if I could, I would have a whole room dedicated to my clothes. Yeah. And all in one space. And I dream of that day. Like a big old island. Yes. Where an I, island in the middle. The vase of flowers. Stunning. everywhere. Oh, the carpet. Like, yes. I want like a I will have carpet. this one day. Don't no, you worry. I, we no, are doing this. It is. I am manifesting it so Let's hard. Like, this. it is what I want so bad. See? I want his and her closets. I don't want my husband's clothes touching yes. my no. stuff. I don't want. I actually think I don't want my husband in my closet. Yeah. No, it's my space. But part of me feels bad about that. But no, I feel no. like it needs to just be this thing no. where it is like it is our space it is our space like We're almost like closet. your office yeah it is because you have to get ready you have yeah. to feel on top of the world you mm-hmm. need your closet to reflect reflect and that. my thing is i have to be able to see everything yes i have to see it or else yes. it doesn't exist no, yeah. that's me too. And that's where I struggle because I have like a dresser in yeah. my bedroom. Oh dressers are and hard. I'm like Mm-mm. I don't I don't know what's in there. So I honestly I took out every dresser for in our bedrooms we don't have dressers in our home okay where do you put your like your underwear and stuff they're just in a closet okay another like side closet thing but i just feel like a dresser hides things oh it does and it's my nightmare and i stuff yep i stuff and i shut stuff and shut yeah that's what i do yeah we can't have that you know those like videos where it's showing like the aesthetics of like organizing and all these different things and bends and hangers Mm -hmm. and it has I love it. Are you a little OCD, you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely like a clean freak, an OCD, all the things. All the things. Anxiety. <laughs> what, <laughs> should we just keep going? Add it to the list. <laughs> um, well, okay. Speaking of anxiety, though. Yeah. Do you feel like modeling has given you more anxiety or has it helped you be less, an- less anxious? Certainly more. 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 Yeah, more. let's call it what it is. You're like, uh, I feel like because, number one, our schedule is all over the place. Yeah. So while it may only be a few hours here and there, I could book a shoot tomorrow. I could book a shoot to Florida next week. I could be out of town in three days. Like, it's such a variety of time and location and everything is variable and you just kind of have to be available, which is nice. Yeah. Um, Because I am. But it is so hard to not have anxiety when your schedule is completely all over the place. Like I will sometimes make a lunch plan with a friend and I just say, just so you know, I may not be able to make that. Yeah. Like, which is hard, right? That you is hard. Be able to, but I'm not complaining because I love the flexibility. I love that I can kind of take off and do what yeah. I want. But definitely that has caused some anxiety. And then sometimes I have so many shoots in one week. And while it is fun things, and I'm yeah. grateful for it, and I yeah. love it, it definitely can become so overwhelming, going from shoot after shoot, remembering what you got to bring, what you got to do, what location, what what that. It's also hard to shoot. Sometimes I'll have like three in a day, and when you do that, it's hard to change your mindset with each different brand in the day. Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, yeah. No, that's so like- Maybe a- one brand's more serious, yeah. one's more cheerful, one's a family shoot, just a variety of things. That can be a little bit challenging for sure. Um, I remember there was a point where I there was one week, and this is not normal at all, but I had nine shoots in one week, which is a oh, lot for wow. me. And I remember like I was completely numb. Like just it was so much. And at the same time, I think a, a billboard had gone up of me. So I was excited about the billboard and I was working for some of the top brands and I was just so excited. I was like, so what's supposed to be the top moment yeah. for me? But I was so numb because I was so exhausted. Just so overworked. Yeah. So there's definitely beauty in intentional limiting, you know, and that is become very important to me. So there's also that side. And then I just, I try as much as I'm gone, I try so hard to like take care of my family. So we have a lot of help and then we make sure that our holidays are magical, our weekends are yeah. good. We travel, we do things because it's so important to me that our family feels like they are number one priority because yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So we need to get your clothes situation figured out oh, to help your anxiety. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, at this point. Are you obsessed with buying your kids' clothes too? Because yeah. I feel like I buy my kids' clothes more than I buy my own. Oh, it's so much easier. Because it doesn't feel like you should feel guilty. No. It's like a necessity. But I will say, my kids are older now, so they have way more say. They pick their clothes. and Is that so hard for you? It's a little bit challenging. That's why my daughter's going to go to a school with uniforms. <laughs> Because I'm like, I can't. Do you know what it is? We've come to the conclusion that if we can just, if I can do holidays and sometimes church, then that's enough for them. That's that's enough control. But I, my boys just wear Nike sets every single day. Literally. That's all they want to wear. My daughter is usually in sweats that match and. So here we are. And then you're all, you know, done up every me. day. <laughs> My husband does have to dress nice every day, which is which is nice. I like yeah. that. He you're looks like, good when he comes home. Like, that's sexy. Yeah. Like, yeah. All yeah. done up like that. Like okay. That. Um, any other trash you need to take out? Any thoughts you've been thinking about? Do you watch shows? Like, what do you do on your free time? Oh, the free time. If I'm not shopping for things or prepping for a holiday or organizing my home or making dinner... Um, or planning issue, I feel like I love to read. Oh, you're a reader. This is a new thing though. Okay. I didn't used to read. Okay. Yeah. What do you like to read? Do you like to read like smut? I love a romance novel. Okay. I am like, is that not the most cliche thing ever? No, I feel like I realize. I feel like people so right silly. now are so into it. Yeah. I still don't read. I'm not on there oh, on that train yet. I wait, need to get a ticket and need, need to get to. on board because I feel Here's like Here's the it would key. Be what that tells me is you just haven't found the genre that like clicks with you. Or I just have really bad ADHD. I like read a <laughs> sentence and I'm like, mm, I got to go back. I have no okay. idea what I just said. That's not or what I just time. read. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know. Yeah. So I just think the key is finding something that you really love and then it just is like effortless. Like I don't even have to try to like reading because I'm like obsessed with what i'm reading actually i remember you talking about this when we were driving in st george yeah you were reading what book was it that you said was so good i don't know i've read like so many what's your favorite i i don't know fourth wing was pretty good fourth wing that's just like one i can think of off the top of my head but yeah i like a good romance story (laughs) okay and i tell my husband and he's like you're so this is so strange and i'm like it's fine it's fine. I love it. Yeah. See, I tried to read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Oh, I didn't read that one, but I heard. I, again, can't read to save my life. So yeah. I didn't I make it I don't feel like through. that's the book. I don't feel like that's your book to try reading. Okay. Yeah. So what should I try? Fourth Wing? Let's maybe go with Fourth Wing. What is it about? Uh, dragons. <laughs> okay. I talked about this with Amy Spala. She was like, fae, fairies or whatever. And I was like, like dragons. But it's like. See, when I thought fourth wing. romance. When I heard fourth wing, you know what I thought of? What? I thought of like the wing of the White House. Like fourth wing. I was thinking like scandal. Oh, I Like the TV show scandal. Yeah. When I hear fourth wing, that's what I was thinking of. Not dragons. (laughs) Not dragons. Okay. Well, okay. So you're going to try it. Okay. I'll try it. Fourth wing. But I do feel like. Reading is nice because it gives me a second out of my own brain, which is yeah. a nice a nice thing. I think I need that. Yeah. I need to try that then. Okay, I'll read. Fine. Yeah, I say that every time. I'm like, I'm going to read. I'll hold you to And it. then I never read. I'll hold you to Have it. you read the Book of Mormon? I have. Because yeah. I haven't even read that. And I'm like, I should probably read that. It's I should okay. probably see if I even like that. It's, very, scripture today. it's a very different kind of reading yes then smut it is. That's- i actually feel like the key to reading the book of mormon is to read it like a story like you would like yeah. a book because i was doing like little chunks here and there and just it's just so hard to pick back up and get back into it it's already hard to read so reading it like a book i feel like is i need pictures <laughs> i need a picture book sweetheart <laughs> i need a picture we're book. not getting <laughs> We give me the, give you me one a, of the give children, children book. Yeah, the, the Book yeah. of Mormon stories, yeah. the old children book. That's I've read that, so I guess but technically I read it. the adult books we oh. read have I, Hey, okay. imagine if it did, though. Imagine if your smut yeah. books, Fourth Wing, oh, had pictures. Hey, my books are not <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we need to make that clear. <laughs> romance. Romance. You know? Okay, it's little, romance. Little, little spice. Little, okay, you know, a little bit of spice. Good, okay, okay, but that's your free time. I love it. I love. Okay, well, we're going to do Trash Top a Can. Okay. Trash Top a Can is sponsored by Dreamland Baby. 
None of my babies have been the best sleepers. With my first baby, Bentley, I tried everything. A friend recommended Dreamland Babies weighted sleep sack. So out of pure desperation, I ordered it. And I can honestly say out of every sleep sack and swaddle I tried, Dreamland Baby helped me give me the most sleep. And that's all I could ask for. So I was so excited when they gave me a code because I have been using that same sleep sack for over three years with all three of my babies. So it's been through the ringer between spit up, blowouts, multiple wash cycles. It is still kick in. Okay. And I'm so excited to add another one to the rotation. I ordered their dream weighted transition swaddle since Banks is no longer in a swaddle anymore, but still likes to feel snuggled a little bit. And he's been loving it. I've been using it for the past three-ish weeks and so far so good. Every time he spits up and I have to put it in the wash and I have to use a different swaddle, I can truly see the difference. It is so crazy how the littlest things can make the difference in sleep. And I love it. So if you wanted to try one of the weighted sleep sacks, you can go to dreamlandbabyco.com and use code weekly trash for an exclusive 15% off your order. You're going to pick Fun. a topic out of this trash how can. How cute this is. It's pretty cute. Wait, I love this. So cute. What's it say? Wildest thing you've ever done. What's the oh. wildest thing that Danielle Davis has ever done? you get to answer done? this too? We both can answer it. Why don't you go first while I think about it? I don't know. Okay. Here, do you want me to move this so yeah. it's not in your face? Okay. The wildest thing I've ever done. I talked about it in a solo episode before, but it was a long time ago, so I don't know if everyone's listened to it. I, do you know who G-Eazy is? No. But probably. He's is a he rapper. A singer? He's okay. a rapper. Okay. I'm bad with like names. He's he's newer kind of-ish. He's not like super mainstream. He is now, but when I met him, it wasn't. Okay. But I was in high school. I was a senior in high school. I think I was 18 or 17. I'd never drank before in my life. Had never done anything ever. Yeah. And I went to his concert and I was like, I'm going to meet him. Like, I'm going to meet him a thousand percent. Like, I'm going to meet him. And so I did the wildest thing ever. And I went up to his um, merch counter, like where mm -hmm. they were selling his merch. And I went up to the guy and I was like, Danielle, I'm like, I haven't sworn once this episode. So bear with me. Hey. I said, whose dick do I have to suck to meet G-Eazy? <sighs> that is what I said. <gasps> okay. I never sucked a dick. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> and the guy was like, find me after the show. And I was like... Oh, okay. Like in that moment where you like, what have I just yeah, said? Yeah, what have like, I just said? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the concert proceeds to keep going. Okay. And we're, we're watching it and g -Eazy goes, hey, everybody, I want to bring out my best friend since day one, Mr. Marty Grimes. And who comes walking out? The man that I spoke to at the merch counter. Wow. And I was like, I told that guy I was going to suck his private part. Like, what? <laughs> Wow, <laughs> what's happening yeah. so then after the show i go up to him and i'm like um i didn't know you were like actually friends with ge's and he goes yeah like we're best friends like here's my number text me so i text him and he's like come around back once everyone leaves the venue and you can come on the bus and like meet ge -Z. and it happened i went in the back of the bus i go into a little more detail of my solo the solo is called uh grandma don't listen to this okay um but yeah, I had my first sip of alcohol on you the really tour bus. Went. You really with did the G -Eazy. thing. I, this I senior in high school. This. this is senior in high school. Beyond. I don't know how I didn't get sexually assaulted. There like, are many uh, like there are where that was so many scenarios where yeah. this could have gone so badly, so and we weren't allowed badly. to have our phones or anything because we were all underage and there was alcohol and drugs. And Gosh, I am like genuinely worried for you. No, I'm it was, this is it was done. crazy. It was it was one of those things where I knew my mom would pass out and die if she knew it was happening. Certainly. But like yeah. it was a story I'd want to like tell my grandkids one time. <laughs> so I was like, maybe not the dick sucking part, but like, I don't know, maybe I'm a fun grandma. I don't know. I mean, but yeah. Yeah, no, I least. was wild. I didn't suck anyone's dick that night, if anyone's oh, good. curious. I'm glad. Yeah, let's clarify. He did that. ask. Okay. He did ask. That's a whole other story. That is a whole other okay. story. Um, and then I got kicked off the bus. <laughs> he was nice about it, though. He was nice. He was like, he basically asked me, and I was like, 
no. Yeah. And he was like, okay, well, I think you guys should probably like head home, you know? And He's so, like, okay, the party's Yeah, so then. we need to find some other girls who will wow. do that. I'm proud of myself, though, for not doing it and like sticking to my I mean, yeah. guns and being like, no. Yeah. Um, But thank goodness he was nice about it. Okay, well, as you're saying this, I'm like, I did go to a Snoop Dogg concert, which is a little shocking because I... I yeah, what's your genre? I don't normally do that kind of thing. Yeah. But I was younger okay. and I went and I did get pulled up on stage. But I didn't I I like I think they immediately realized how young I was. They asked me and they're like, Yeah, you can How old were you? I wanna say I was like fourteen. And I You were fourteen at Snoop Dogg. What was I doing there? I don't know. But I was I definitely Okay, I'm gonna move this So I had a when I was in junior high, that was definitely my Okay. My little, like, I wild had, like, face. my wild face, yeah, where I tried things and did things, and that was it. Never again after at, that. At 14? Yeah. Literally a baby. Oh, so, my gosh. whereas, like, some of my other friends had their wild streaks, like, in, in college, college, when it, like, matters and people are paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, mine was all done, so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so, you go on wild. stage to Snoop Dogg. Yeah. I that's, was too young. That's I, I crazy. I actually don't even remember who Four, I was there with. That's crazy. Yeah. 14. Yeah. If my daughter, like, there's... <laughs> oh, it's Mom, wild. I want to yeah. go to Snoop Dogg. She's in eighth grade. You're like, no. No. Yeah. And the fact that you were close enough to where you went on stage. Yes. I know. That's the thing. But your story... <laughs> No, tops. It takes no, the cake. I put myself in harm's way. I was like, you I saw an opportunity. I'm gonna get this done. Whatever I need to do, I'm, I'm gonna do. But I have that mindset when it comes to like famous people, where I'm just like, I'm gonna meet them. I'm gonna find a way. Okay. I never really do. Yeah. This is like the one time. Yeah. There was another time where I tried to like chase down Sean Mendez and like oh. went to the hotel that I thought he was at. Yeah. Did like a whole thing. I think I talked about that in an episode as well. Um, I'm like a I'm a groupie. I'm okay. a groupie. I I do think there's this moment when people see someone famous that you like all ration like all like rational like is gone. It's gone. Like you're just like go into this freak mode. And well, and I think when you're with like your girlfriends and you're all just like equally obsessed over this person, you mm-hmm. just turn into f- like creeps. You're like, yeah. okay, we're d- whatever we gotta Truly. do. Yeah, like total fangirl. Because mm-hmm. I've met. Okay, I haven't met a lot of famous people, but I feel like if I were to see Justin Bieber in real life, I would be chill. Like, is I that would, your person? Oh, I would freak out. Okay, deep down, I wouldn't freak okay. out like at him. Yeah, but I would. I'd be like, oh. My gosh. Like I would like I would pee myself, but I'd keep it secret. I'd be like, oh my gosh. Okay. But like if I was with my girlfriends and we were at a Justin Bieber concert and we see him, are we chasing him? Yes. A You're thousand percent. Him. But if I'm okay. by myself, like getting coffee or whatever, and I see Justin Bieber, I'm playing it cool. Like Okay. But with so my he's girlfriends. Like your ultimate, like if I met him. Because when I was 14 when you were seeing snoop dogg i was singing one <laughs> less lonely, lonely girl wild life. <laughs> i was obsessed with justin bieber okay who's your like one celebrity i just think that and I, this is controversial I okay feel. i can't i'm wait. gonna say it though because it's true to me i really think brad pitt oh, and no. angelina jolie like that they are so like i hate that they're not together anymore. i hate that they're not together it, it. It's, it should be illegal. It should be. But I think that they're like, they're so cute. Stunning. Stunning is a better word for it. Yeah. No, Brad is sex on a stick. Like, <laughs> so attractive. Very attractive couple. Like, very, like, yeah. Like, no, that. I, love I, I loved Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Well, that was the beginning of their love story. I know. But even though he was see, cheating. I'm I like a romance. Yeah, but he show. was cheating. Okay. Yeah. He wasn't Dang faithful. It. Dang it. And how you we get him is how you lose him. And so he probably changed. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my. That's, that's what I tell all my friends who are single. Oh, okay. I'm like, how you get them is how you lose them. So you should like remind. So them. like when I when I hear about married people having affairs, yeah, I'm like, okay, well, how you got them is how you'll lose them. They will now cheat on you. Like, oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I'm. It's, I, it's the truest statement I've ever heard because everyone I know it ends up happening. I'm like, yeah. how you got them is how you lose them. Yeah. So it's true. That's it's my true. advice of the day. I'm going to pick one to see if we get Okay, anything. yeah. We'll do one more. If you could kill any character from a TV show, oh my gosh. what character would it be? Kill? Kill. Like, kill them off of a show because they're annoying. Oh. Or in your case, a book. Or a book. 
Any um, characters that you absolutely cannot stand from TV shows? Again, we wouldn't actually kill them. This is right. just, this is just us killing their character because they're I'm, annoying. Okay, here's the thing though. Like, I feel like there's not good shows right now. No, there's not. So when I'm thinking of a show, I'm like, literally nothing comes to my mind because we're not watching shows right now. No, when I think of a show, I'm thinking of like freaking like, old talk about shows. some shows. Like Friends. The Office, and I'm like, yeah. all those people, I don't want to kill any of them. No. Like, none like of them the are Like, The Friends best. is so good. So good. And The Office. But I said The Friends. Yeah. Office. Friends. I meant The Office. The Office. Friends. Um, or, like, Gossip Girl. I'm like, all those shows, there's nobody I would kill. Okay. I would... But that's the problem. All the characters that you'd want to kill, yeah. somehow they, like, make it so now you like them during the episode their their character development evolves and then you end up liking yeah. them at some point yeah i can't think of any show where i've hated a character the entire time no same i'm sorry that so we're not killing anybody we're not killing anybody we love everybody we don't kill people we don't kill people never no. never will we ever i feel like i would be the worst on like a reality tv show the worst did you get asked to be on a reality tv show i did i did actually and yeah, never I you said wouldn't no. do it. Yeah, no, it's not for me because I a care way too much about what people think. Unfortunately, it's a downfall. It's I know. Okay. I'm aware. And the second thing is, I feel like I would just be crying. <laughs> I just would be every like, why? episode crying. <laughs> I that's hate great television <laughs> confrontation. I would rather run away, and I just, which is also not great, but I would not be very good. Because I, that scares me. But visually, it would look very good. <laughs> I could show up like in some good fits, looks. Like, your fits, like, that would <laughs> be good to I could show up in that way. Say nothing. You would be best dressed. But yeah. For sure. Oh, thanks. I don't for know sure. about best dressed, but I would definitely show up in you a way I want there. to show up. You would be up I definitely there. enjoy the, just being unpredictable. I guess that's a good way to describe my fashion. It's a just little you unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. I, love, I like to push it a little. I love Daniel Davis, Unpredictable. Oh, I don't know that that's... <laughs> so the title of the podcast? I don't, uh, no, no, Unpredictable. No, Everyone's not. like, wait, what? <laughs> Let's not go that route. That's the move. Like, we never know. We that's never not know. the move. Danielle, I love you. Thank love you so you. much for coming this and taking out so trash fun. with me. Thank I feel you. honored. I was excited to like share this side. I know, I, like I said, I'm no. more polished on Instagram, so I don't share this side. So thank you. No, I'm... I'm so happy you came. I was I when I asked you, I was like, I don't know if she'll say yes because she doesn't I talk was about this you stuff. Asked me. So I was like, I hope she says yes because truly meeting you and when you told me about Peyton and St. George, I was so taken back. So I was like, I had no idea. No idea. Yeah. And I just the way that I feel like so many people who might be going through that or who could relate to that would just yeah. love to hear like from you, somebody who looks so polished and perfect on social media, like has gone through something so traumatic. Yeah, and I I like to talk about it only because I want people to know like they aren't alone, yeah. right? Like it is comforting to know, obviously horrible, but also nice to know that you're not alone and that there are other women out there who've gone through something similar. And my heart, like I just, yeah, oh. so much love to anyone who's gone so through a miscarriage, love. stillborn, lost a child, any of it. It's, it's no mom should have to ever go no. through any of that. No. So. Well, I love you. You're I so brave you. and beautiful Thank and strong you. and amazing. And I'm proud of you. This is amazing. Look what you've done. Thank you. Look what you've done. No. Take a minute, you Thank know? Thank you so much. That means a awesome. lot. That means a lot. I'm your number one fan, Danielle. I'm your fan. And everyone loves you. Um, They need to follow you on Instagram. You don't do TikTok though. I don't, but maybe I should. I think I might. Maybe I should do it this weekend. How about TikTok? Yeah. Or you know what you should do on TikTok is like, give people tips and tricks on like modeling. I know, but here's the thing. I feel like it's just been done. Everything's been done. But it hasn't been done by you. Oh, thanks. You thanks, have <laughs> a special light to you. I feel oh, like I, don't I know. would just want to watch you talk. Oh, I, so that's you could probably really the one thing whatever. I really don't enjoy. I don't enjoy talking to the camera. Oh, then yeah. TikTok that's probably is why I don't do you do yeah. you could do dances bring back the tiktok dances oh. you're a dancer oh are they gone or tiktok yeah dances that doesn't gone? really happen anymore oh that's i good feel to like know. no one really dances unless okay. yeah no unless i'm not on that side of tiktok i don't see dances anymore you could wow. bring it back okay start some dances yeah i love to dance i love to dance with my family but 
I don't think, I think that's a private thing. It's private. We'll keep that private. Yeah, we'll okay. Keep that we'll keep private. that one thing private. All right, you guys. <laughs> well, I hope you have the best weekend ever. Danielle, again, love ya. Love you guys. And don't forget to take out your trash.